Hey everybody, Chad at Turner's Warehouse, and today we're gonna make the new Barista Coffee Scoop Kit. So before we get started, I wanted to show you the Barista Coffee Kit Scoop comes in two scoop sizes, so you can get the large or the small, and it comes in three finishes, the gold, the chrome, or the gunmetal. All three finishes come with a stainless steel scoop and the stainless steel hanger ring. All right, so for this project, I'm going to be using my deluxe mandrel and mandrel saver. I've got my blank on my bushings. The cool thing about this kit is it uses the neural pen kit bushings. Now, why is that cool? Well, one, you may have already turned a neural and have the bushings, but if you haven't, the neural is one of my favorite kits. So I would encourage you when you pick this up, if you're getting those neural bushings to grab a couple of neural kits and give them a try. Now I'm gonna turn it down with my bowl gouge just cause it's a little smaller than my roughing gouge. I'm gonna use some easy wood tools and in particular, I'm gonna use this uh, 3 16 beading tool. I think for some reason that a, a little two bead here and two bead there might look cool on this. So we're gonna give it a try and see. So let's get going. I'm up to 3,400 RPM. That should be just fine. Get this rounded. And I don't know what my shape's gonna be. So I wanna get this rounded off and then flatten it with my easy wood tool. And that way I can get a good round body before I start with the beading tool or any other shaping. We look pretty flat. So let's just give it a little smooth. And the blank I chose for this, we should be able to get a good look at it now. The blank I chose for this is a rosewood and you can see it's got some really cool grain. It's kind of reddish with some brown streaks. There's some light pinks in there and purples, uh, but like a really dark line there and then a really light line. So what I like about this wood is you get very good contrast in color. And when we put finish on this, it should look really good. So I'm gonna kind of taper these ends to the bushings. And I'm gonna give them a little bit of a bevel. And then right behind this is where I wanna do my beading. So I'm gonna taper up, and then I'm gonna do the beading right on the end there. And you can hear I'm bumping the bushing, that's okay, because I wanna get it nice and flush. So I'm gonna bevel these, and then I'm gonna take down the material just a little more. And I could use a round tool, but this uh, negative rake radius works really well as well. All right, now I'm gonna bring this down. Just a little flatter, a little slimmer. Not a lot, but a little. And I think I'm gonna kinda of give it a little bit of a taper from the front here to the back, just for the look of it when you're holding it or hanging it. All right, let's see how that looks. I think size-wise for a coffee scoop, it's gonna be just fine. Uh, let's see, I like it. You know what I think I'm gonna do is uh, quickly give it a light sand. That way when I do my beading, well, let's see. The bead will cut into it. So I don't think I need to do that actually. So let's go ahead and give it a little beading on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with two on the front and one on the back and we'll see how that looks. And these are small beads. So I'm gonna bring it in right there. This tool, tool is so cool. Clear it off a little bit.
And then I learned last time, I really want to center the point of my cutter that's going into the center of where I, my last cut was. So I'm really eyeballing that carefully. You can see I'm only cutting on one side because I'm in that void. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Now I'm gonna do one bead on the back. I was originally gonna do two, but I think one will distinguish the back from the front, which will look good. All right, now I'm bringing out my little detailer. I didn't mention it before, but I think I, think I need to take off just a little bit here. And I can do a little bit more with the sandpaper, but I don't want a sharp corner on either of these sides. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit of that edge with the detailer. And actually, you know what I think? I can use the side of this. Oh yeah, look at that. The side of this beater. And then I'll just sand it to get that good round profile. Perfect. Let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, that looks cool. So I'm gonna sand this. I think that's all the turning I'm gonna do. Let's grab some sandpaper. All right, I'm gonna start with some 400 here. I actually don't wanna sand too much or too low of a grit before, because I'm gonna do the Yorkshire Mylands finish that I love. So I'm gonna get these edges and what I'm doing is kind of rounding those, making sure I don't have any sharp edges. And making sure the inside is smooth. Abernet would be a better choice here, but I didn't have any handy, so I'll just use what I got. And I'm trying to be careful not to hit that bushing. I don't want to drag any metal into my wood. This rosewood is so nice. And actually what I should do, and I will do that now, is I should take this off and put it between centers or put it on some finishing bushings. And I can still use my mandrel saver to protect these mandrels and the bushings here. I don't want to over tighten it like I would with regular bushings. All right, let's keep sanding. So it won't take much here. I've got 400, which is above the recommended for using Yorkshire. So I'm gonna get these middle parts. What I'm gonna do is turn this off and hand sand these grains long ways. And I'm making sure to get this front little step where I step down to the bushing. It's gonna take a little back and forth here. Because when I'm sanding across it flat, I can't get that little curve. And it may be hard to see, but there is a little curve to the front and a little curve to the back. So we'll get all that green long way. And we'll get these little curves. I'm just gonna work my way around it. And I'm back to the front, okay. So now is when you'd want to inspect it, make sure there's no scratches or blemishes you don't like. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a Mylan's friction finish polish, a friction finish, polish finish. I don't know what you wanna call it. Uh, but I'm gonna be using Yorkshire grit in between the sanding sealer and the Mylan's friction finish. And the reason I do that is it will give it that extra little shine. If you have not checked out the video on the Mylan's uh, Yorkshire combo, feel free to go check that out. It'll walk you through step by step. We are gonna cover it a little bit here, but not as in depth as that one. So first step with this is to sand up to 240, or in our case, we did 400. Then 
apply sanding sealer. Now, I just noticed there was a couple little lines here from my turning that I want to get out. So do that before you start. And that's why it's good to inspect. All right, I think I got it. Now the sanding sealer and the Mylans will take care of some of the, the low grain spots, but they won't take out scratches, obviously. So you wanna make sure before you do any finishing uh, of any sort that your wood looks good and you're happy with it. I've got a paper towel here clean. I'm gonna grab my sanding sealer. And what I'm gonna do is just put a dot of sanding sealer on it and I'm gonna spin this around. Now, I've learned from the last time when I did these beads, or the first time I did these beads, you kinda of have to use a lot to get into the, the holes or the lines of the beading. But then it, you don't want it like gunked in there, so I use the paper towel edge to kinda of clean up and get out any excess. But I wanna make sure it's covered, and I didn't get the inside of these beads, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on. Whoa, almost dropped. And I'm going to get these a little better. I'm going to try to kind of squeegee down in there. I don't know if that's the right word. Wedge it down in there. Wedgie it. But I need to get, I need to get good sanding sealer coverage into those cracks. All right, this should, this should be more than enough. All right. Got it down in there. And I want to get it all flat and out of the cracks. Out of the cracks as far as the excess. So I'm going to use the edge. And I definitely got a lot in the crack, so. No big deal. The sanding sealer with the rest of the process has worked really, really well. Um, I was pretty pleased with my finishing before, especially pens and small items, but it really has helped take it up another notch. So with this sanding sealer, it's on here. I'm going to let this dry. Usually it takes about 30 seconds to a minute for me where I am. In your case, if you are somewhere cold or humid, it could take longer. So play it by ear as far as how long you need to wait on your sanding sealer to dry. I can see on in the inside here, it looks, well, a little bit came off. It looked a little wet, but I guess it's just shiny. Uh, but if it's wet or tacky, don't move on to the next step yet. You want to be able to touch it and it should be dry. Like this feels dry. It doesn't feel tacky at all. So I should be good to go to my next step. Now that next step is Yorkshire grit. I'm going to put just a little bit on here, just a little bit. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the lathe at a low speed and I'm going to move this across and I'm going to slowly increase the speed. To, whoop. Start over. <laughs> I'm going to slowly increase the speed to break down the grit. I don't know if you can hear it. I'll put my mic up here. You can kind of hear it sounds like it's sanding. It's kind of cool. But I want to make sure and get that all the way across there and speed that up. So I'm going to speed it up as I go. And once I hear it break down, I'm going to slow it down and come back to slow speed. Now, since I have these beads, I am going to take out the middle because you need to clean all this Yorkshire grit off before you put your finish on. I think it'll act as a, a barrier or an inhibitor on your grit or on your finish, the grit. So do your best to get everything off. You shouldn't have any on your paper towel when you're done. So I'm going to go back and forth here twice. That first time there's just tons of it. So it comes off real quick, but I want to make sure there's no Yorkshire on my piece. And it's probably good to use a clean spot so you can see if any color is coming off. There you go. We look clean, so we're good to go. Now, 
We can go right from that because there's no drying or anything because you got to think of your sugar it as a sandpaper. So what we did was we put down sanding sealer, then we sanded it really highly. It's going to look nice and shiny, but that's not a finish. It doesn't do any protecting. It just shines it. And man, that looks good. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. Hopefully that's showing up. It looks awesome. Got to stop this camera from shaking. It looks really good. So now we're going to go back to the Mylan's friction finish. I'm gonna shake this up. You always wanna shake it because it does have a little bit of a wax element to it and it will separate. So shake it up. We're going to put on one drop. In this case, we'll put a large drop. With a pen, I put a tiny little drop. We're gonna put on one drop, turn on the lathe, and we're just gonna slowly move this across letting it kind of build up a little heat. And we're probably gonna need a little more because this is a little bit bigger piece. But you can see as I go across the shiny that's following my progression with that dot of finish. So let's go one more drop. And we'll start right here and go to the end. And it is a little trickier with these beads, but not bad. But we wanna just build up a little heat and if you ever need more, do more, but it's good to do more rather than doing a lot at the front and getting sticky, gooey finish. So if you do too much, you'll get a sticky finish, which you don't want. But instead, look at that thing. That looks killer. So I'm hoping that shows up really nicely. Let's see if I can add some light if that helps. There we go, boom. So that might help with the finish or with the view, but that looks really good. Now, I could probably, because of the type of wood, this rosewood is a little thirsty. I could probably do one more little drop and just kind of buff it a little bit with it. I'm gonna start in the meat and potato section here in the middle, and then I'll get on the ends. And I'm just moving kind of quickly. I'm letting it build up some heat and that'll help set the finish. And then you notice I like to go back every time and kind of hit these beads up. I just don't want a clump of finish getting trapped in there because one, it won't look good and two, it'll get sticky and tacky. But this, I can see it shining while it's spinning here. That looks super good. And that is one of our $8 rosewood blanks, which to me is hard to beat. I'm gonna let this thing sit here for just a sec. I'll turn on the lathe and let it spin for maybe two or three minutes and then we will assemble this thing right now. Okay we are ready to assemble this. It's a very simple assembly. You've basically got two parts that you press in. Once those are pressed in you thread the head in and install the key ring uh, hanger on the back. So really it's two parts to press and that's it. Now, one thing you wanna take note of, even though these are the same size as far as the shoulder, uh, you could put them either direction, it wouldn't matter. If you did make a choice like I did, picking the two rings for the front and the single for the back, you wanna make sure and follow up with that so you, you know, assemble it the way you intended. Now, I'm gonna do one end at a time. I'm gonna put the front end here. I'm gonna put my press blocks and I'm going to slowly press this together. Now, this back end, because it does have this little knob for the, the ring to go in, I don't want to put that in first, but I'm going, to I'm going to use a bushing. This is just drilled out plastic, softer plastic. And I've got a couple different sizes to where I can go over it and push against it without pushing and risking breaking that little part. So I'm going to load it into my press. I'm going to hold that bushing in place. Kind of a balancing act here. And you want to make sure and get that nice and lined up and then slowly press it and get it going. You can always come back, get a little more distance and press in. Once that's done, I can release this, take off my bushing. I'm going to install my ring. This is always a tricky one though. Didn't didn't go too bad. They're not super heavy duty, which is nice. 
but they are just enough to hang it if that's a thing you want to do. Lastly, I can screw together my scoop into the handle. And you got a long, nice thread there, so that should be very sturdy. And this is all stainless steel, the scoop and the shaft here. And you have a beautiful coffee scoop that you can hang. This is perfect for gift giving, uh, making a set for yourself or someone you know, or if you do craft shows, these do really well at craft shows. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make this barista coffee scoop. It is a very easy kit to make and it comes out looking really good. One thing I did want to mention, it does come in two sizes and they are interchangeable. So you could unscrew this large head and put the small head in if you wanted to, or if you mix something up when you're assembling, you can always switch them. So it's a very nice kit, great quality and looks good. And I hope you get out there and make them. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.